and welcome on in just ahead of a matchup tonight on Vipe Live between the Halton Buffaloes and Trinity Trojans. Dan Byford with you, getting ready to bring you this one. Buffaloes are out of it at this stage. However, they are still trying to play spoiler, sending a Texas Tech commu uh, commit to the mound this evening. And Damian Bravo, he's going to be pitching, thrown from that right side. And as he takes his warm-ups here, time to go over the lineups as well as defensive alignment. We're going to start off with the defensive alignment for the Buffaloes. First to third, it's Brian Neverett, uh, Neverett excuse me, Jacavius Williams, Mario Gomez, and Angel Moreno. Left to right in the outfield, Cameron Leslie, Yaziel Caballos, and Tyler Miklich. And then the battery is Damian Bravo throwing to Ramon Corona. For the Trinity Trojans, their lineup looks like this. Leading off and playing center field, it's Levi Reisenhoover, followed up by Jay Kelly, the shortstop. Jude Pacheco, the catcher, bats third. In the cleanup spot, it's the pitcher on the other side, Dom Vasquez. Jason Baker bats fifth and plays left field. And the first baseman, Chris Casillas, is hitting in the sixth spot. D.H. Braden Davis bats seventh. Dylan Bowers, the third baseman, bats eighth, and Manny Perez will round it out in the ninth spot. The Euless Trinity Trojans are coached by Will Averett and our umpires for tonight's game. On the bases, it's going to be Keith Mears behind home plate calling bells and strikes. It's going to be Andrew Shemenkovich. And ball's about to come down. We are just about ready to go. That was a strike, a heater with plenty on it. And so was the throw down to second base. We're ready to go as Levi Reisenhuber steps up to the plate. He will bat from the right side. A little communication between Angel Moreno and Damian Bravo before the first pitch is thrown and we're ready to go. From the windup, here's the first pitch. Popped straight up in the air, out to short, trying to get a read on it, and it falls. Heads up base running, hustling all the way to second base. I assume that will go down as an E6. A two base error, and Reisenhoover does his job as the leadoff man, now, getting on. Brings in the shortstop, Jay Kelly, and hard for him to find a much better spot. And this one, starting off the game with a runner on second base, chance to drive someone in. Where's a shin guard on the left leg, angled inside. Off of second, Reisenhoover. First pitch to Kelly is in there at the knees, strike one. Infielders in the middle infield pinched a little bit towards second. A little bit of daylight being played at second base by Williams as that one's low. Scooped out. It's one and one. First baseman playing on the grass. Third a little further back. Now daylight from short as that one is cut on a miss. Something back foot there looked like an off speed. Uh, not very much less speed though, so probably something like a slider. It's one and two. Got him with the back foot pitch. And his fourth pitch from the stretch tonight. Here it is. Got him swinging, fishing for one in the dirt, but looks like he's gonna get up to first without a throw as that got away from the catcher, Ramon Corona. So it's a strikeout. And uh, far be it for me to declare myself the one who decides whether it was a wild pitch or a, whether it was a wild pitch or a pass ball. But either way, he's on first despite Kane. And Jude Pacheco is in a big spot here. Runners on the corners and a chance to create an early lead for his side. Hits from the left side, open batting stance. Only slightly open. Very relaxed looking at the plate as he fouls one straight back. Looked like he was right on a fastball there that had plenty of tail. 0 and 1.
cleanup hitter and opposing pitcher Dom Vasquez waiting on deck. Here's the 0-1, just a little too far outside, probably ended up low as well. Catcher had to come out of the crouch, but Corona kept it in front of him. It's 1-1. One one. Throw over to first, bounces, gets away. That's going to bring home one, and we'll see where the other ends up as it rolls all the way into the corner. Headed for third base is Kelly. He's going to get there easily. He's taking a turn at third base, but holds up. First run of the game belongs to the Trojans. And not in the most typical fashion either. An error, a strikeout, and a wild pitcher pass ball. Take your pick. And so now it's a runner at third, one run in, nobody out. And the meat of the lineup due up. Here it is. Breaking pitch, finds the inside corner, frozen. Makes it one and two. Couple of practice cuts, twirling the bat at home plate. Looking at the runner from the stretch. Now he'll kick and deal. Fastball's a little too high. Did come back over the plate, I think, but never got below the letters two and two. But that one started out almost in the other batter's box and tailed into the zone. Breaking ball, got him. Back door and he couldn't come up with it. That's the second strike out of the game for Bravo, but the first out of the inning, one gone. Brings in Dom Vasquez, and to use the old cliche, he has a chance to help his own cause here. On the bump for his side, hitting in the cleanup spot, and as a runner just 90 feet away, probably looking for something in the air. Corners are in, he's squared. Pulls back, and that one gets away. Runner might come home regardless. Pitcher is covering, but does not get back from the backstop in time. Another run scores, 2 nothing without the benefit of a hit three errors up on the board here in the first so now the bases are clear at the very least and no one to worry about scoring on a hit from Vasquez as that one missed maybe a touch inside maybe a touch high 2-0 2 to nothing. our score early 2-0 Cut on and missed, could not resist that one. Just fell off the table and ran away from him. It's two and one. Bravo has shown good stuff, but just maybe a little unlucky up there so far. Now his two one. That one did not find the inside corner. Tried to go front door, it's three and one. Jason Baker waiting on deck, left fielder. Three one gets away up and in. Could not get the release point on the breaking ball there and he'll head down to first with a walk. Baker now, the left fielder, gonna dig in from the right side. You can see one of those uh, sliding hand protectors in his back pocket. Should he get on base, we'll see him put that on. Double play is on now potentially. But if it were to get past Baker, Chris Casillas would be next. Out of the stretch again. Squares pulls back, looks at strike one. Looking down to third again for a sign. Now he'll unstrap and restrap his batting, glo batting gloves. Step back in. S showing bunt again. Runner getting a little further off, now retreats. That one's grounded hard between third and short, and we'll see if he can go first to third here. He cannot, as a good throw is cut off by Mario Gomez, but it's the first base hit of the game for Ulysses Trinity. Now number 10, Chris Casillas. A good effort by Gomez, as well as by Angel Moreno, but ultimately not able to get to that one. Very solid by Cameron Leslie to get it in quickly. 
a little bit windy here today. Get some swinging and missing over the top of a breaking ball to start off his first look. Casillas, the sixth man to come to home plate for his side. D.H. Braden Davis waiting on deck. The pitch on 0-1. Here it is. Squares doesn't pull back. Foul tips it straight back. It's 0-2. Two runs so far on one hit and three errors. One third of the top half of the first is gone. Breaking ball, low, real tough pitch to lay off, but I'm sure he's glad he did. Would have been tough to hit that one. Started about knee high and inside and broke over the plate, but maybe ankle high. One and two. He's set. Daylight from both middle infielders. Now one retreats as that's grounded softly foul. Stays alive with that chopper. Chukavius Williams had gone back to second. Mario Gomez had stayed near the bag, but got back in position by the time the pitch was delivered. One, two. Blocked in the dirt. Good job behind home plate by Corona. Two and two. Count even at two and two. A good A-B here from Casillas. Show and bunt again. Set up inside. Here it is. Pitch is outside. Swung on a miss. Strike three believe he ought to be out anyway, although good hustle there. And the courtesy runner for the pitcher, Dom Vasquez, is Blake Armstrong, standing at second base. But it's the third strikeout of the inning for Bravo. Sure, if you had told him that was how it would go, he'd be happy with that, and he would not expect that means he's down two to nothing early on. Pitch inside, throw down to third base, and looks like he got him by plenty. Indeed, he did. And Davis's at bat will have to wait as Armstrong is caught stealing. Two runs on one hit and three errors as striking first are the Trinity Trojans in the top half of the first inning. We'll take a quick break, be back for the bottom half. You're watching Haltom Buffalo's Baseball on Vipe Live. Back just ahead of the bottom of the first inning. As the Buffaloes get ready for their first chance at the plate, let's go through their lineup real quick. Damian Bravo, the pitcher leading off. Rodrigo Bravo, the DH, hits second. Cameron Leslie, the left fielder, bats third. In the cleanup spot, Mario Gomez, the shortstop. Ray Ramon Corona, the catcher, bats fifth. Brian Nevret, the first baseman, bats sixth. Tyler Miklich, 
will bat seventh. Yaziel Caballos bats eighth and plays center field. And Angel Moreno, the third baseman, will bat ninth, rounding things out. First to third here for the Trinity Trojans. It's Chris Casillas, Tyler Cruz, Jay Kelly, Dylan Bowers, left to right. Jason Baker, Levi Reisenhoover, Manny Perez, and the battery, Dom Vasquez, throwing to Jude Pacheco. Mentioned it earlier, our base umpire is Keith Mears. Our home plate umpire is Andrew Shimonkevich. And we have a brief pause here. Walk-up song plays, and we are ready for the home half of the first. In from the right side is Bravo, throwing from the right side, and that's a hard liner, but an atom ball. One pitch, one out. Bravo is retired. In L5, if you're keeping a book, And he was out in front of that pitch. I think it was something off speed, but he still put real nice contact on. Rodrigo Bravo, the DH in now, also from the right side as he hits one hard to short, fielded on two hops by Kelly. Strong throw, but it's picked. Actually, it came up a little short, but a nice pick by Casillas over at first base. And I wonder if we're gonna see a take here because it's been two pitches and two outs. Five, uh, six, three. Excuse me. Just a good job getting rid of it at short by Kelly and solid faith in his first baseman Casillas to bring it out of the dirt. The lefty and left fielder Cameron Leslie is in now. Lays off one inside and low. And he did take, uh, I don't think he would have needed a sign to take there though. The what out? Right on the black outside corner with something that was moving away from the left-handed Leslie. Would lead me to believe it's something along the lines of a two-seamer. But could be a four-seamer with the right run. 1-1 one, one is a breaking ball. He rolls over to first base. Scooping it up is Casillas. He'll take it himself. And how about a five-pitch inning? Right there, hard to start much better than Vasquez did. One, two, three. It's two nothing. On top are the Trojans after one full. We'll be back after a quick break. You're watching Halton Buffalo's baseball on Vipe Live. And after a quick break, we're back here for the top half, or visiting half, if you will, of the second inning. Two nothing, that's our score. Braden Davis not coming to the plate for the first time in this game, as he did come into the box last time, but after a caught stealing, he has a reset here. First pitch of the second inning to him is low, maybe outside as well. Out of the windup, here's the 1 0. High pop. And that's over us and everything all the way into the parking lot. Went in a little bit of defense mode there, hoping to protect the equipment, but no worry at all. As here's the 1 1. Somehow lays off a nasty slider. 2 and 1. <laughs> 2 1 pitch. 
Popped straight up in the air, center field, and not even to center field, actually. It's fielded on a hop and thrown away. Would have been a close play anyway, so we'll see how it's scored, but that was like a liner that died immediately right in front of the second base bag. And that is an error. Goes down as an E6. And this inning starting the same way as the second, uh, first, rather. And a little bit of discussion here, maybe about whether an extra base should have been awarded after that one was thrown away. Not quite sure. Was not able to make out from our perch here in the bleachers whether it got out of play. Looks like he'll stay at first base. As Will Averitt returns to the third base coaching box. Dylan Bowers, the third baseman, looking down over to his coach. Taps the box, taps the plate. Now he's in the box. Squares. And lays off. Pulled back in time, I believe. One and up. Shown bunt again with an inside setup. Here it is. That pitch came outside and low. Two and up. Manu Perez waiting on deck. Hitters count here for the number eight man, Dylan Bowers. Squares and gets that one down, but it's right back to the pitcher. He'll throw over to second for one, on to first, but he'll just eat it. A very nice play by Bravo, getting it over to Gomez there. As Bowers grounds into a 1-6 fielder's choice. Manny Perez in with one on, one out, and nobody in in the first half of the second inning. Playing right field in tonight's contest. High elbow batting stance, slightly open. As he rips one high in the air, left field backing up there is Leslie. He's at the wall and puts it away. Man, he did not miss that by much. That's power you'll take in the bottom part of your lineup right there, but it's just an out in the end. Now batting, number 12, Levi Reisenhoover. Rolls back over for Levi Reisenhoover, Hoover, who hit one straight up in the air behind shortstop his first time, reached base, and came all the way around. Two gone. The first pitch of the at bat is in the dirt, blocked in front of home plate. By Corona. One and up. One hit in the ball game so far. That one is grabbed by the netting, pretty scalded for a straight back foul pop-up. Evens the count at one and one. One one pitch, breaking ball went a little low. From the stretch, here's the 2-1. Swings through a fastball on the outside corner, look behind it, 2-2. Two and two. Digging back in again. It was a one pitch at bat the first time for Ryzen Hoover. This time he's working the count. Two balls, two strikes, two outs in the second inning. Here it is, 
That's in the dirt. Runners headed for second base. Throw is up towards the first base side of second. No tag will be made. But a good job reeling it in by Mario Gomez. So it's a stolen base. For Bowers. And the count fills. Kelly waiting on deck. Did go down on strikes his first time, but also came in to score. Payoff pitch. Ripped hard down the third baseline. A dive, but it's getting into the corner and left. One run is going to score for sure, and up to second base without any slide whatsoever is Reisenhuber as he drives in the third run of the game for his side, make it 3 nothing. Trinity on top. And now looks like Andrew Shimonkevich did a little bit of cleaning of the plate. RBI double for Reisenhuber. Jay Kelly will try to drive him in, keep the line going. First pitch to Kelly. Broke outside, maybe low as well, 1-0. So make it two hits now in the ball game, both of them belonging to Trinity. one -oh, ripped hard to third, just under the glove and past the dive. Wean waved around to score from second base is Reisenhoover. The throw will not be cut off. Runner takes second on it as well. Good base running by Kelly and good hitting as well as he finds himself with an RBI single. Make it four to nothing. That may have been scored a double, but in my book, I just put it down as a single, taking second on the throw, good base running. But, you know, I'm not the official scorer. Score it how you like. Jude Pacheco struck out his first time as well and did not have the benefit of getting to first base afterward as he lays off one outside. So 4 nothing off of three hits and five errors. That's out as well. Really, Bravo's been pitching pretty well, just a little unlucky. Found the outside corner with a backdoor breaking pitch, 2-1. Foul tipped a 2-1 pitch that was headed in on him. And that's one of those where it might have just grabbed the bottom of the bat or something like that. Or maybe the bottom of the barrel there. Either way, it's a strike on something he was trying to hold up on. Count evens at 2-2. Two two. Another breaking ball going for the back door, I think. Ended up over the middle of the plate, but it's fouled into the parking lot third base side. We'll do it again. Two balls, two strikes. Two in and a runner on second base in the second inning. Cut on and missed in the dirt though, so it'll have to be a throw down to first. It's there in time. A strikeout with a two to three put out to end the inning, but not before two more runs score and the Trinity Trojans double their lead. Four to nothing. That's our score as we head to the home half of the second inning after a quick break. You're watching Haltom Buffalo's Baseball on Vipe Live.
Back here for bottom two, four to nothing. That's the score. answer. Haven't done so so far. In fact, they only saw five pitches in that first inning. A hard line drive, a hard ground out, and then a chopper to first base. One, two, three, they went. Mario Gomez, the shortstop and cleanup hitter, getting his first look of the ball game. Lays off one just, no, I'm sorry, that caught the black. A strong strike call from Andrew Shimankevich. It's 0-1. And he is dotting those locations 0-2 now. Gomez, Corona, and then Nevret guaranteed this inning. And he tried to get him to chase after giving him two towards the outside part of the plate, but he did not oblige on the breaking pitch in the righty, uh, lefty's batter's box, one and two. Breaking ball, sits on it beautifully, drives it out to the left center gap, but able to get there without much trouble is Ryzen Hoover. And it's allowed out number one. Seen a couple of nice uh, fly balls in this game. We saw on the other side, Manny Perez hit a uh, towering fly ball that maybe was just a couple feet from leaving the yard and right there that looked like a double or something like that but just a little too underneath it as Gomez is retired. Upstairs and laid off by Ramon Corona who walked up to my Sharona. <laughs> I, I can appreciate that. It's 1-0 and to him. Takes one at the letters, one and one. One one pitch. That one tailed into the strike zone, I thought, but it was a little low. So even if it was over the plate, it's a ball, two and one. Turns on one on the inside, chops it over to third. There is Bowers, strong throw, chest level to Casillas, who doesn't have to make a pick this time. 5-3 ground out, two up, two down. So it falls to Nevret, Nevret rather, to get this rally started in the bottom half of the second. Playing first tonight. And hitting in the six hole. Not an open batting stance, just about parallel his two feet. And very straight up, we've seen some guys crouching. It's 1-0, and oh, and the pitch, he's still dotting that outside corner, 1-1. One and one. Miklich on deck. If Nevret can get aboard. The 1-1. One, one. Breaking ball in the dirt. It's 2-1. and one. Now the 2-1. Also in the dirt. Good discipline here from Nevret. Looking to be the first man aboard for his side. And he can have a hack at something here if it's in a good spot. He does, but he rolls over. Hit on a one high hop to third, and the throw in plenty of time to get him for out number three. Couple of ground outs to third, and a tall fly out to left center. And it's another one, two, three for Vasquez. We'll head to the third inning, and it's four nothing. Trojans still on top. You're watching Halton Buffalo's baseball on Vipe Live.
Back for the third, four to nothing, still our score. Dan Byford here with you on Vipe Live. It's the Euless Trinity Trojans on top early on. Only two hits and yet they have four runs. If you're wondering a large reason why, and you can see the scoreboard on our broadcast, that third letter between H, uh, runs, hits, errors, I suppose, is uh, got a five in it. Five errors by the Haltom side. As that one's popped high up. Might be playable, in fact it is, and narrowly missing. A nice play there is Ramon Corona. He covered a lot of ground to get over there. It's a pretty big behind home plate area. So Dom Vasquez is down 0-1. He's been excellent on the mound so far and is getting his second trip hitting as the 0-1 is on its way. That's hit hard on line center field, but looks like it's Adam. In fact, it'll drop a single for Vasquez as now I believe he will be run for again by Blake Armstrong. But uh, Vasquez has had two plate appearances, only one at bat as the first one was a walk. Two plate appearances before he has pitched through his opposition's lineup once entirely. Certainly not bad. Think you feel good about that if you're him. Jason Baker squares, drops one right in front of home plate, and it's called foul. Might have hit home plate, in fact. And I honestly think if you're Baker there, you might be a little relieved about that because that close to the catcher, I feel like it's an easier play to make. Although you do have the benefit of a head start at first base oftentimes, so it's just like trying to throw out a runner stealing, but with some delay. Usually, obviously, you're looking for those gaps between first and second, third and short, and the pitcher. Squares again, foul tips it in the mitt, and it's 0-2. Chris Casillas do next. He's made some nice picks so far in this one, but struck out and is only at bat so far. Armstrong off of first, was caught stealing earlier, so we'll see if we see him in motion again. That was stealing third, which is a whole lot harder to do. 0-2, squares again, and he will have second base anyway as that gets away from Corona. And I suppose he pulled back because it's one and two now. No more chance for a double play here. Although anything on the left side, you probably have a good chance of keeping the runner in scoring position put. Daylight being played by both middle infielders as he squares again with two strikes and it rolls foul. Strike three. Makes it five in the game now. Only four of which have resulted in outs. Chris Casillas in now. He was one of those strikeout victims his first time after working the count to two and two. Chops one foul. Nice grab made over there barehanded by someone wearing a, uh, I suppose you would call it a windbreaker pitching coach over there. Gets it right back to the man on the mound, Bravo. Out of the stretch, a couple of looks at second, now is 0-1. That's in the dirt blocked and runner had started towards third but a great job keeping it in front of him by Corona, who has had to do a lot of that today. Bravo has real nasty stuff, and a lot of the times it's broken so much that it ends up in the dirt. One and one to the first baseman. He is showing bunt himself and time.
And back in the box, ready to go. Out of the stretch, the 1-1. One, one. Ripped hard, Tomahawk chopped to shortstop. No chance at third, throws to first and out by plenty. It's a strong throw by Gomez as that ball kind of died off the bat. So I thought it might be close, but it's a 6-3 ground out. D.H. Bra Braden Davis was on base his first time after grounding to short, or perhaps, yes, it was a ground out to short, or rather an E6 as he swings through strike one. And then he advanced no further than first base after Dylan Bowers grounded into a fielder's choice. 0-1. Oh Popped high in the air behind shortstop. Hustling back is Gomez, hustling in, sliding, and able to snow cone it. Not sure how that survived the, no, he didn't snow cone it. He trapped it. And in fact, it did not survive the fall. He dropped it. Cameron Leslie gave it his all. We'll see how that goes, but I think it's probably closer to a hit when you have to slide like that. Keep an eye on the scoreboard for you. Keep all of you updated at home who are waiting with bated breath. So another run comes in to, or no, I'm sorry, he stops at. Yes, another run did come in to score. Just the uh, scoreboard out in right center is a little behind right now. I don't see another error on there, but I do see another run now as that one is fisted behind the second base bag. Actually, it dies in front of it. He tags him after scooping it up. And that's out number three. The very rare for unassisted. So, two gone now. I, I guess they actually called him safe. That's my bad. Apologies. Thought he got him there on the way to the bag. Runners at first and second. That's inside. And Manu Perez put a charge into one his first time as he tries to do it again, swinging for something in the upper part of the zone, but not able to come up with it. It's one and one. Set up outside. Pitch comes inside. That's over the bag at third, and that's going to bring in at least one. It gets all the way in the corner. We'll see about two. Waving his arms hard, pumping and heading for home plate as Perez is heading to third base, and he'll get there. The ball gets away, but not out of play. It's a double and a advance on the throw, as well as two RBIs. Hard contact both times for Perez, and the second time he's rewarded. Seven nothing now. Now batting number twelve, Levi Rising. Lineup rolls over again, and getting his third look now in three innings is Le Levi Rising Hoover. Center fielder has knocked in a run with a hit and scored a run off an error as he lays off an outside breaking ball. One zero. That's ripped hard left center field. Backing up, hustling is Caballos, and he's there to put it away, but not before three more come across to score. It's seven to nothing now. Trinity on top after two and a half. We'll head to the bottom of the third inning. After a quick break, you're watching Halton Buffaloes baseball on Vipe Live.
back for bottom three. Seven nothing our score. Looking to make a dent into it is the seven hitter, Tyler Miklich. As it's seven, eight, and nine here. For a Buffalo squad that has been retired in order every inning so far. Ball one laid off. It's Miklich, Caballos, and Angel Moreno that we know we'll see as he rips a liner into left field base hit. And if I jinx that perfect game right there, I'm sorry. The first base runner, first hit. And first time in the stretch for Dom Vasquez. Yaziel Caballos covered a lot of ground at the end of the top of the third to make a nice grab. And now he gets a chance at the ditch. Miklich off first as Caballos lays off one low. Little bit of space between first and second as the second baseman Cruz is moved for the potential double play. That one's in the dirt as well, 2-0. Dan Byford here with you on Vipe Live. An early 7-0 lead for the Euless Trinity Trojans over the Halton Buffaloes. That one is right there, high outside corner, 2-1. And, and again, looked like maybe a two-seam fastball, something with some run on it like that, as it started on the outside and tailed back inside toward the right-handed batter. Runners going, chopped to third, foul, will reset. Oh yeah, there's uh, action over down that third base line. Some throwing beginning in the bullpen. Tell you who that is in just a sec. 2-2 gets away, make it full now. And it's someone wearing number 15, but the roster I have does not have a number 15 on it. Oh, rung up on a pitch right on the black. Great job bouncing back there from Vasquez after allowing his first base runner. He has his first strikeout in the game. Brings up Angel Moreno, playing third tonight. Finds the outside corner. He's been very comfortable living out there. Moreno, the last man for his side to get his first at bat in this one, at least as far as the starting lineup goes. Hit ninth, playing third base. Made a couple of attempts as he takes one chest high and over the middle of the plate, 0 and 2. Made a couple of attempts at third base to keep balls in the infield, ultimately was not able to grab them. And I believe, It's Brian Neverett that's warming up, and excuse me for not realizing that as down on strikes is Moreno. He's in the starting lineup, and I was looking among the subs, so I totally missed him. Two down on two strikeouts. Brings in Damian Bravo, who hit a hard liner his first time, but unfortunately for him, it was gloved. Over at third base by Dylan Bowers who's looked good with the glove over there, as well as his arm. Accurate and strong. Breaking ball outside and low, one and up. One hit so far for the Buffaloes, looking to add to that as it came in this inning. 
but it would have to come with two outs. 1-0 pitch. Breaking ball right over the middle on the inside half of the plate, about thigh high. 1-1. One one. Miklich going as that's foul tipped. And you know, certainly a count where you can understand the runner moving. You're not really taking the bat out of the hands of Bravo. It's a de facto hit and run there and still not a two strike count at that point. So pitcher probably gonna be around the zone, something hittable if it is an official hit and run. Two and one is often the one I think of, but both are understandable. One and two now though, with two gone, We'll see if the runner's going again. He's not. Breaking ball laid off inside. A little lower than belt high, but it was inside. Count even at two and two. Two balls, two strikes, and the pitch from the stretch. Runner does go again. That one's ripped high left field, backing up the left fielder, Baker. He's at the wall, and he's just going to watch it. How about that? A two-run jack will get you into the game. 7-2 now as the Buffaloes are helped out by their pitcher doing the job at home plate. He got all of that one, and ultimately... All Baker could do was just watch it soar over the wall. And maybe that wakes the bats up. Nice high five there. Exchanged. On the way back into the dugout. Between Bravo and his catcher, Corona. So, nobody on anymore for Rodrigo Bravo, the DH. As we'll see how ba uh, Vasquez bounces back, he's pitched very well in this one. Don't even know if it's fair to say he made a mistake on that pitch. Just a real good baseball player at the plate. That one's in the dirt, laid off 2-0. And now we have a conference Will Averett out to talk with his guy. As a couple of wild ones, a little out of character from the rest of this start. Bravo grounded out 6-3 his first time. Hit the ball pretty hard, but came away with nothing. Actually, that goes for both Bravos, as Do uh, Damian Bravo. Lined out to third his first time, like we mentioned, and of course then he followed it up with a two-run jack. All right, we're ready to go as the mound visit breaks. Bravo in with a 2-0 count spotted to him from Dom Vasquez. Hitters count for the number two man. That one's ripped left center field on the line. Heading back and hustling to his left is Reisenhoover. He's not going to get there. It's rolling all the way to the wall. Digging hard and headed for second. Now he's headed for third. Cutoff is made. Throw to third is not going to be in time. That one's a triple, folks. As a home run is followed up with a three-bagger for Cameron Leslie. To be clear, I mean for Cameron Leslie to dig in and uh, following Rodrigo Bravo's triple. I understand that could have sounded confusing. Now action in both pens.
First pitch to Leslie. On the outside corner. Oh one. That one's hit the other way. Two hopper picked on a third hop and thrown onto first in plenty of time. Nice pick by Jay Kelly. Or, uh, excuse me, yes, nice pick by Jay Kelly to retire the side, 6-3. So, two runs come across and both on the long ball. We'll be back after a quick break. You're watching Haltom Buffalo's baseball on Vipe Live. Back for top four and some defensive changes as a new pitcher has entered. Brian Nevret has come from first base to the pitching spot. Mario Gomez moves to third base as that one is high and tight. And that got him actually, hit him on the elbow. So Jay Kelly on for the third time, second time without a hit. So Brian Nevret is on the mound. Mario Gomez is at third base. Moving to short, it's the starting pitcher, Damian Bravo. And to second is Angel Moreno for Jacavius Williams. Quickly a runner on for Jude Pacheco. The catcher has struck out twice. As that one's bunted down the third baseline, hustling down to throw on the run and make it just by a step or so. Here's the newly minted third baseman, Mario Gomez. Looked pretty good on that one. That's a sack. 5-3. Up to second base is Kelly. Brings in Dom Vasquez, the pitcher. He's been a crucial man at the plate so far with a walk and a single. Done a good job getting aboard, and that's why he's in that four spot as that is lined straight in front of my face, but there's a net there. Oh, and one. I was ready. Runner on second base with one away. Vasquez looking to get aboard for his third time. Runners going for third, pops straight up in the air. And over to shortstop underneath it is our starter from this game, Damian Bravo, and he'll put it away. Putting that one in my book as a P6. And two gone. Straining that runner at second base looks possible. But first, you got to deal with the number five hitter, Jason Baker, who has 
singled in this one, but he has struck out as well. Looks like a lot of velocity from Neverett. Or at least it did on the one that got Kelly on the elbow. Didn't look like it felt very good. Kelly was able to retreat back to second and avoid a disastrous double play. Just missed the outside corner there. Over the top with that pitch, 2-0. Long look at second, kicks and deals. That finds the inside corner. And that's been the style of Andrew Shimonkevich today. He's been very emphatic with his strikes and strike calls, even if they come a few seconds after the frame. Here's the 2 1. And time first. Runner was dancing up and down second base third base side of the second base bag to be exact. It's a hitter's count for Baker after a step off by Nevret. We're ready to go. Looking in for the sign again. Comes set very quickly. Couple of looks, now he kicks, deals. Swung on a missed, runner is going for third again. Throw was far too late. That's a stolen base. Two balls, two strikes, with two down and a runner at third base now. In Kelly. Misses outside. That had some tail to it. Count fills. If it gets past Baker, Casillas would be next. He's grounded out and struck out. Straight back. We'll do it again. Looks like he had that pitch timed. Both dugouts sending a ret representative to retrieve that ball. Ultimately, Trinity came away with it. Full count pitch again. Here it is. And he squeezed him inside. Ball four. Runners at the corners now and watch out to see if Baker gets moving, if only to draw a throw, get an extra run across, because of course, if the run scores before the tag, it counts. Chris Casillas, as mentioned, struck out and grounded out in the first and third innings, respectively. Looking to do something here with a couple of runners on. It was a leadoff hit by pitch, a sacrifice bunt, a pop out to short, and now a walk. First pitch, he makes him bend out of the way inside again, one up. He's been up by the letters, but so far has gone either a little inside or a little outside. That one's not outside, it's right on the black, one and one. Counts even at one and one with a runner at first and a runner at third. Dan Byford with you on Vibe Live, bringing you Buffalo's baseball. Runner's headed for first. I think he may have been trying to draw a balk as he went first move. Runner will score from third, and we'll see if they can at least finish off the rundown here. They do. So there was some first and third shenanigans to bring across the eighth run for the Trinity side, but a well-executed rundown afterward to make sure to at least get out of the inning. 8-2, that's our score, a six-run deficit for the Buffaloes as they look to now add to what they did in the previous inning and cut this deficit a little bit. We'll be back after a quick break. You're watching Halton Buffaloes Baseball on Vipe Live.
We're back for the home half of the fourth inning. 8-2, that's the score. Trinity Trojans on top of the Halton Buffaloes. It's 4-5-6. Gomez, Corona, Nevret, unless something changed that we didn't know about. So that one finds the inside corner. A little bit above the knees. Strike one, and it's back to the Vasquez we saw in the first three innings. Getting ahead with a hard-to-hit strike one. That is strike one nonetheless. Breaking ball front door, and he froze Gomez there, 0-2. Now the 0-2 pitch. Ooh, almost had him going after that one. He was leaning indeed. It's 1-2, and two though, as he manages to hold back. Showing you the same pitch tw twice in a row, second time for a strike. That's got to be tough to lay off. 1-2 pitch. That's out. Maybe low as well. Three hits for Haltom, four for Trinity, according to the scoreboard. Yet a difference of six runs. That's hit on a line, center field. We'll see if it dies. It does in front of the center fielder, Ryzen Hoover, and it'll be the leadoff single for Gomez. Good job working the count there. Ramon Corona grounded to third base his first time. Did not have a runner on or the luxury of it his first time. But does here. He hits that one the other way. Looks like a nice piece of hitting that'll fall in. Indeed it does. We'll see if the runner goes first to third. No, he'll hold up at second. Gomez at second after a strong throw from Reisenhoover. And it's back-to-back -back singles to start things off in the home half of the fourth, and now time is called. Courtesy runner for the catcher. It's Anthony Quintana standing in at first base. This game's newest pitcher, Brian Nevret will get his second look as that breaking ball almost ended up around his dome. Never really fell off. 1-0. Didn't get on top of that one. There is no longer action in that pen for Trinity. So we'll see if this is just Vasquez's inning for the time being. He's pitched well, but in a little bit of trouble here. Nobody out, two runners on, and a 1-0 count. Setups outside. Pitch, that's grounded to third base and through the hole between third and short. Runners coming around to score from second. It's Gomez, and he will get there as the throw is cut off. An RBI single for Nevret, who is the second pitcher of the game. Third pitcher, maybe, if you count actually Vasquez as well, although he didn't have any RBIs, to help his own cause. Make it an 8-3 ball game now. Brings in Tyler Miklich. His first time he singled. And it's just been a hit parade so far as we got a courtesy runner, of course, for Nevret. That's Jeremiah Sanders coming in at first base. Kind of funny how the lineup worked out that the pitcher who came in in relief was right behind the catcher. And so now we have two courtesy runners aboard. Tyler Miklich has singled, and that's been it. That's He's only had one trip to the plate so far. As he digs in with two on, lays off a breaking ball in the dirt, and really it almost uh, carried to the left-handed batter's box. It's 1-0. Really windy here now, so if you're getting anything uh, choppiness from our mic, we apologize. 1-0, he lays off that as well. Very patient, 2-0. On deck, it's Yaziel Caballos in the hole, Angel Moreno. Both of them struck out their first time. Would look to change that. Might even be asked to square if the bases were not juiced. 
That one's belt high inside corner. Nice pitch on a 2-0 count to start the battle back, 2-1. and one. Little bit of a bat wiggle, slightly open stance, set up inside 2-1 pitch. Breaking ball is grounded through the box, looks like a chance at two, he's gonna take it himself for one, throws in the dirt, it's picked! What a double play, 6-3, Jay Kelly. Wow. And that'll put a damper on this little hit parade that had started. Great heads up play by Kelly to step on the bag himself for one. Throw on to first for two. Oh, I suppose actually it looks like he was late because runner is holding at first base. Apologies, did not see the umpire. Thought that throw definitely beat him. It Now the runner's headed back, so I think it actually did and my first instinct was correct. Apologies, he was just having a conversation with his coach, but Miklich returns now. Yazael Caballos with two down and a runner at third. One run in so far for the Buffaloes. That's low and away. Gotta feel pretty good for Vasquez after ending up in some trouble. Managed to roll the deuce there. Get a big help from his shortstop, Jay Kelly. one -oh. that's low. So a hitter's count here for the number eight man, Caballos. We'll see if he has a big hack on 2-0. Just missed the outside corner, or maybe a little high. I'm not sure which, but either way, it's 3-0. 3-0 pitch, probably taking all the way. He is, and he will be rewarded with first base. So after striking out his first time, Yazael Caballos was able to work a walk. Angel Moreno, I'm sure, would take a similar result. But with runners on the corners, we'll see if anything is activated like we saw in the top half of this inning. And a courtesy runner at third base. That one's away and low. Missing low and outside right now a little bit is Vasquez. But that's an okay spot to miss, especially if you got a catcher you trust back there to keep it in front of him. That's not something that's going to get tagged. That one's knee high over the center of the plate, one and one. From the stretch with the runner on first. The 1-1. One, one. Oh, he faked a third and then decided first and threw to neither. Such a devastating move if you're on first, first base. I can speak from personal experience. Breaking ball, he's underneath it. It's hit behind second base. Cruz is hustling out and he makes the grab. So just the one run comes across for the Haltom side in the bottom of the fourth inning and already we're heading for the fifth. Be back after a quick break. Eight to three, that's our score. Trinity on top. You're watching Buffalo's Baseball on Vipe Live.
Chris Casillas leading things off here for Trinity. It's going to be him, Brayden Davis, Dylan Powers, barring any lineup changes. 6-7-8 guaranteed as Nevret gets ready for his second inning of work. That is a hard line drive rising and now falling in the gap left center. It will get down just past Leslie and the throw from Caballos gets in, but not before Casillas is standing at second with a double. So quickly threatening here is Trinity looking to get some insurance as the Haltom offense has certainly woken up a little more these last couple of innings. They actually have more hits than the Trinity side, but those six errors committed across the first two innings are really what's cost them. Davis, the DH, has grounded into a, well, he ground, a flew into one error, grounded into another one. As he can't pull back on strike one, I think it would have been called one anyway, own oh, one. Bowers on deck. That one on the inside corner is pulled to short, a dive, but it gets passed. And now the throw will come to the cutoff man and able to get it is Gomez and keep that runner right where it is. Good throw from left by Leslie. A great effort by Bravo, but it just went off the tip of his glove. That said, definitely a hit, not an error. He was airborne for that thing. So first and third now, this is a familiar situation for both teams. In fact, in just the last inning, Trinity was able to score a run using the rundown with runners at first and third, manufacture an eighth run in this game. There's 11 total, but eight of them belong to Euless Trinity. Pitch, that's bunted up the first baseline. Pretty good one, nobody's covering the bag and it's a Base knock. And got some uh, something being said by the umpire, just uh, giving him time or something maybe. I don't know, because his helmet came off. And actually, he rolled his ankle in a collision at first, so he's just getting some time to run about, make sure he can do it. But I think that goes down as another single, because you can't really give an error just because no one's covering the bag. If someone threw to the bag that no one was covering, sure, yeah. But uh, not in this case. And now, once again, Trinity is out hitting Haltom. Bases are juiced, nobody out. And it's the number nine man, Manny Perez. But don't buy into where he's hitting in the lineup too much. He hit one just short of a home run his first time. His second time, he had himself a double, took third on the throw, never stopped. I'm sure he would have liked the triple there. Here he has a 1-0 count. That's hit high in the air, behind the third base bag, down toward the foul line. Looks like it's foul, but it's playable. He was not able to grab it, though. A good effort by Leslie, but despite a shoestring attempt, he wasn't able to reel it in. And Perez seems to be all about launch angle. I'll say that. He's been underneath everything, but in a good way. But that's where baseball's headed nowadays, of course. Counts one and one. The pitch out of the windup is on the black outside corner. A real nice fastball. One and two. And as far as I can tell, that fastball is the only pitch Neverett throws. I haven't seen anything else, though. Maybe he throws a changeup or something like that. That's a little difficult to tell the difference on. He's been throwing strikes since he got in. Outside setup on one and two. Swung on and missed. Not able to catch up outside. And Neverett has his first strike out of his one plus inning outing. And also he knows that now a double play ball could end the inning. Though if it goes to the corners, which are in right now, you would imagine it goes home and maybe they try a five, two, three, or something like that, or a three, two, three, to get the lead runner for sure. That's on the outside corner. 
And that was not a fastball. It looked like a slider or something. So maybe he was just saving it for his second time through. Which this is not really his second time through, but he came in for the number two batter on deck. Laid off a ball, one and one. That was Jake Kelly. Who's hitting in that two spot? Right now it's Reisenhuber, who swings through uh, an off speed on the inside corner, and now I feel like he's just trying to pull me, uh, prove me wrong, because he's thrown what looks like a slider and what looks like a curveball. That's what I get for assuming I know things. The one-two pitch. Just missed the black, two and two. Dan Byford with you on Vipe Live. In this 8-3 contest, Really hasn't been quite so one-sided as it seems as of late as the 2-2 is on its way, fouled up over the first base dugout. Actually, it hits the net. Trying to make the grab over there was Kelly, but not able to do so. Two and two. Of late, Trinity has probably had the offensive momentum, but right now that could change in a big way. Uh, excuse me, Haltem has had the offensive momentum as that got over the batter and that's going to bring a run in. Might have thought it got a piece of the bat, but I guess it didn't. Three and two, the count now, and also now a nine to three game off of the, well, I suppose a pass the ball there. It wasn't that high. It started behind the batter's head, but it broke in a much lower. Is that one's fouled straight back and caught by the net? We'll do it again. Still pitching out of the windup as runners are on second and third. Here's the 3 2 pitch. Fouled straight back again. And I always wonder about the pitching out of the windup with runners on base because if you got someone fleet footed enough, it shouldn't be that difficult to. Well, maybe it would be difficult to steal home, but if you unsettle the pitcher in your attempt to do so, because you can definitely get back during the windup, you definitely could force a balk, and that's about as free as a run gets. And that hit him. It was ball four, even if it didn't. So down to first base, we'll give Ryzen Hoover the hit by pitch there. Third time getting on today. Brings in Jay Kelly, who has struck out, reached on the strikeout, had an RBI single, been hit by a pitch, stolen third. Quite an eventful day. And a mound visit now. Things have not gone off the rails yet for Neverett, but trying to prevent them from doing so. Once again, the benefit here with the bases loaded, force any bag, including home plate, which is a plate rather than a bag, and Double play can end the inning. Six-run lead for Eulis Trinity. Looking to add to it big time with Jay Kelly, who has not been retired in this game. Over the top delivery, hit right back through the box, hustling over there, a dive, and it's off the glove. That's going to bring in one run. We'll see about another. Yes. Another run will score as well. Up to third base is Dylan Bowers. Uh, excuse me, uh, Levi Reisenhoover. And it's a two RBI single for Jay Kelly, who's spent plenty of time on the bases today. Make it four occasions where he's gotten on the base pads now. 11 to three. Davis and Bowers both scoring on that one. As the left-handed bat of Jude Pacheco gets another look. He hits one the other way hard, slicing away, but able to grab it. Runners tagging headed for home plate, and he'll get there without a throw as it's cut off. A good job by Leslie moving to his left to pull that one in, but it's another RBI in the inning. A sacrifice fly to left field for Pacheco. Brings Dom Vasquez up. He popped out his last time, walked his first time, singled in the middle. And with two gone, 
and a 12 to three lead where he is the pitcher of record for his side. He'd like to add, lays off a pitch, one and up. Four across in this inning, that's the most in any one inning for Trinity today. They've scored in every inning. That hit him. And I'm sure that Vasquez will have some time to run this one down after he gets the first if he wants, but he's going to be run for anyway, of course, as the pitcher. It's Blake Armstrong again. So he's been aboard three times. One for two, though. Funny how baseball works. You can reach base three times and yet be one for two. Ninth man to come to the plate in the inning is Jason Baker. Gets any further, of course, that would mean that Trinity is batted around. And, of course, that would mean at least a fifth run scores as looks like we may have a pitching change here. I think it's the center fielder, Yazael Caballos, coming in. He was pointed at by his coach there. As it doesn't look like Nevret is staying in the game. So Yazayo Caballos has come in the game to play, or pitch, excuse me, he was already in the game, replacing Brian Neverett, who will return to first base. And with Neverett leaving center field, it's going to be Jeremiah Sanders going to center. And Joel Chavez has left the game. Can see a breaking pitch of some sort being thrown by Caballos. He's just about done warming up. Yazael Ceballos on the mound, getting ready to see his first man, the ninth man, to come up to the plate in this half inning, Jason Baker. First pitch is a breaking ball, just missed it for a ball. Baker has singled, struck out, and walked. His 1-0, that fastball never got down enough. 2-0. 2 pitch, he's high again. So the breaking ball missed only narrowly, but he's gotten taller here with these last two fastballs. 
definite hitters count here, but I doubt there's, well, I would never say never, but with a nine-run lead, don't know about a hitter's count here. For the number five batter, split in the middle of the lineup, playing left field. That's inside, lays off ball four. So for the second time in this inning, it's going to be Chris Casillas. Had a base knock his last time, his first time recent, re reaching base. And he'll dig in with the bases juiced. Four have come across the score. And Ceballos just looking to stop the bleeding at this point. Jackson Brown doing the courtesy running over at, uh, excuse me, he's swinging a bat here and looks like he's going to come on for Chris Casillas. So Jackson Brown hitting for the first baseman, Casillas, here in the fifth inning as the 10th man to come to home plate. 1-0 after he lays off the first pitch. That one's right there on the outer half, 1-1. One one. Brown wearing number five, slightly open stance, slight bat wiggle, a right-handed hitter. Swings at a breaking ball high. That one might not have dropped into the zone if he didn't offer, but it's awfully tempting up there. One and two. The pitch, another breaking ball. That one got me a little bit. I could tell it was going for us, but there's a net. One ball, two strikes, two out, four in, three on. Outside setup, we'll see if we see the Breaking pitch again. No. Looked like a fastball with some sort of run on it. Two and two. Count even to Brown. He could bring home three if he finds a gap. Hits that one on the ground. Shortstop over there is Bravo. He'll throw the short way to second base to retire the side. But not before six come across, uh, four come across, excuse me. The lead is now nine, 12 to three. Trinity on top, you're watching Buffalo's Baseball on Vipe Live. Back out for a fifth inning of work is Dom Vasquez. No defensive changes for the Euless Trinity side. As Casillas re-entered the game after Jackson was retired. Gonna have to make sure to make a note of that in the scorebook, not get confused. First pitch to Damian Bravo. He is on one, but fouls it. Looked like he really wanted that pitch. I know it went to the first base side and you would assume late, but I think he was out in front because there was a little something taken off of it on the inside part. Oh, and one. Here it is. That breaking ball just stayed a little too high. Popping out of the crouch was Pacheco. Out of the windup, here's the 1-1 pitch. In the dirt, laid off. 
count skews to advantage Bravo again. He hit a two-run blast his last time and lined out the time before that. Hasn't exactly gotten cheated up there. Set up inside on two and one. And the pitch comes outside. And he thought it was ball four. But in fact, it was ball three. Appreci appreciate the commitment to it afterward, though. The umpire's not going to call you back. Might as well take the base. 3-1 pitch on its way. Definite hitter's count. Breaking ball's outside. Laid off. That one is ball four. And he took a second to get out of the box that time. But eventually, Bravo heads down to first base. It's his first time actually residing on the base pads in this game because, of course, he touched them all in his last at bat. And the time before that, he lined out. Brings in Rodrigo Bravo, the DH. He tripled his last time. Not a bad follow-up to a home run. Ultimately was not brought in to score though. Pitch out of the stretch. Breaking ball way underneath it behind third base. Hustling over the shortstop Kelly. He's there. Camped out underneath. Puts it away for the first out. Nice range there. Of course that is one of those that is always considered the shortstop's ball. Pretty much anything on the infield that they want is their ball, to be fair, but behind third base bag, he's always deferred to the shortstop, pretty much. Same thing with first base bag and the second baseman. Brings in Cameron Leslie. Still looking for his first time aboard. We'll dig in with one down. Grounded out to short his last time, and Dom Vasquez would take that. Jay Kelly has already shown the ability to turn a double play almost by himself in this one. As he stepped on the bag, threw onto first base. A 6-3 double play. That is not what happened to Leslie, though, as he lays off one low. In fact, that happened to Tyler Miklich, who scalded one to shortstop, only to be led down by finding out he grounded in at two. Pitch to the lefty is in there at the knees. No throw to second base. I would still call that one a stolen base myself because it was covered, even if no, no throw was made. So Bravo has himself second. No double play possible now, as Leslie is able to lay off a breaking ball that's dropped off the table. And I don't know if he's getting more break on those as the game goes on, but that was a good one. However, smart hitting there, managed to lay off and also get himself an advantage count. Set up outside, 2-1 pitch is poked, foul into the parking lot over the leftmost bleacher. Now the count's even, 2-2. Two and two. Here's the pitch, breaking ball laid off inside. He's thrown him a lot of those. He probably has a pretty good idea of how to time that at this point. But we'll see if he can lay off or if he can hit a perfect one. 3-2, runner's going for third. He steps off and out, dead to rights. Thought there was a chance that might be a balk because he had very nearly started his delivery, but ultimately just picked off, caught stealing. And now it's 3-2 with two outs. And Vasquez can work from the uh, windup. The 3-2. That's inside, laid off. Ball four down to first base. Leslie goes for the first time of this game. Mario Gomez due next. Singled, eventually came around to score his last time. If it gets past Gomez, Ramon Corona would get another look. He looks at one that just about splits the middle, maybe a little skewed toward the outer half of the plate for strike one. Off of first base, Leslie 
the 0-1 pitch. Breaking ball. He tried to crush that thing, but pulled off of it. He was out in front, 0-2. One strike away from avoiding trouble for the first time since the second is Vasquez. 0-2. Popped up. Behind home plate, a chance, and able to make the catch is Pacheco to retire the side. Some threatening from the Haltom side, but ultimately nothing comes of it. 12-3, a nine-run deficit for the Buffaloes as we head to the bottom of the fifth inning. After a quick break, you're watching Buffalo's Baseball on Vipe Live. Yaziel Sabayos was able to get the one man I uh, he faced in the top of the fifth inning. And now here in the sixth, he's going to look to keep the trend going. Not a single inning so far where Trinity has not scored. If we're to go inning by inning, as strike one is in there on the inside corner, it's been two runs, two runs, three runs, one run, four runs. 12-3, to three. as that one is laid off, looked awfully close, 1-1. One and one. Out of the windup, the 1-1 one, one pitch is cut on and missed. He pulled the string there, I think, 1-2. and two. And really, while you can't do much when your opponent is scoring on you every inning, maybe... Looking at the six errors, you think things can be a lot better for Halton right now. One, two, grounded to shortstop, fielded there by Bravo, strong throw. At head level, gets him for out number one. So a brief at bat there for pitching staff that has not always been able to get them so far as Dylan Bowers comes in. He's not had difficulty getting on base in this game between a fielder's choice, one to six, his first time as that is a dot on the outside corner, own one. Followed up with reaching base another time, I believe on a fielder's choice as well. Can't really make out my scorebook here. 0-2 oh to him. He's also singled. But now he finds himself down 0-2 oh as Ceballos has come out throwing strikes. 0-2. Oh Just missed the outside corner. That's a smart waste. But no offer. 1-2. and two. There is some action in the Trinity pen as it stays one and two after a foul straight back, Bauer's not missing by much. Manny Perez waiting on deck. This bottom part of the lineup has done the job as well as anyone in this game. And time called. Looking in again.
the one two swung on a missed pretty much grooved a fastball right there but not able to catch up to it and that'll make it two up two down in the sixth inning Manny Perez has flied out, struck out, and hit a double, taking third on the throw. That fly out was quite a stroke, just stayed in the park. Wind probably not helping him. It's blowing and has been blowing pretty loudly, uh, strongly to the diagonally toward the third base dugout. Pretty much all game. As he takes strike one over the middle, one and one. Not going to help a ball get out blowing that way as that looked, uh-oh. No play made by any fans, but off a hop, actually, there is one. But that foul ball, not playable by any of the players. It's one and two. Breaking ball, got him to swing over the top of it. Strike three, two strikeouts in the inning for Ceballos as he sets him down. One, two, three in the sixth. It's a shutdown inning, something that's been sorely lacking for the Haltom side. And now they'll look to respond by putting up some numbers of their own in the bottom half of the sixth inning. After that, only three more outs. Six outs left to work with. It's 12-3 with Trinity on top. You're watching Haltom Buffalo's baseball on Vipe Live. Back for bottom six. And leading things off, it's Ramon Corona once again. He's grounded out and singled as part of that hit parade that took place in inning number four. Ultimately, that hit parade, not that fruitful. A lot of singles and then, of course, a double play put a real damper on things. Breaking ball just above the zone. If he knew where that was going to end up, I imagine it was a tough one to lay off. It was still a good breaking ball. It broke, but it was just above the zone and a place you can drive as he takes a breaking ball in a much better spot, a little bit above the knees, one and one. It's a real nice hook that we've seen from Dom Vasquez today. He's been able to throw it in any count, one, one. Now he comes back with that fastball that's got some run on it, one and two. Way ahead on Corona here. The one two. Swings hits a liner between the hole, uh, between third and short rather, in the hole between third and short. And that's in very quickly reeled in by Jason Baker to keep him at first base. But a leadoff single is a leadoff single. And here comes the courtesy runner once again. It's Anthony Quintana. Once more, I am curious if Bravo were to get aboard again. Uh, excuse me, not Bravo, but Ceballos. If he would have a different courtesy runner. After all, Jeremiah Sanders has entered the game defensively. So you, he would have to, as that's taken inside for a ball. Brian Nevret has singled for an RBI and grounded out. The single was his last time, ground out his first time.
just able to hold up there on one on the inside part of the plate. Always so hard to hold back on those inside pitches because there's a high probability you foul it. You have to get going sooner because it's inside and you have to get to it faster. And of course, uh, it's not on the outside so you can't, you don't have the time to pull it back. 2-0 is in there, knee high, inside corner. If he was a lefty, that would be his happy zone, but as a righty, that's a very valid spot to throw to, two and one. Two one pitch. That breaking ball is grounded softly to short. Kelly takes it, on to second for one, on to first for two. A great job by Tyler Cruz completing the turn and a pick by Casillas. There was a little confusion at the start between Bowers and Kelly, but Kelly ultimately went with it. Once again, he's the shortstop. He can have any ball he wants. And it's the second double plays turn of the day. So that'll put a damper on any potential rally. As that's swung through by Tyler Miklich. I think he got a piece, but either way, it's the same result in an 0-0 count. Makes it 0-1. Now the 0-1. That's hit high in the air, not that deep. Medium depth, even shallow left field, as there was a chance for Kelly, but ultimately, it's Baker coming away with it to retire the side. A 1-2-3 inning where someone got a hit. They're not set down 1-2-3, but rather a double play and a fly out and things very quickly in the sixth. We'll head to the seventh. It's 12-3, Trinity on top through six full. You're watching Halton Buffalo's baseball on Vipe Live. Back here for top seven, as it's one last chance for Trinity to try to add to their lead before the bottom half of the inning, where they try to shut the door with a guaranteed at least nine run lead. Number 12, Levi Reisenhoover Levi has had a busy day at home plate, grounded into an error. Got aboard, came around to score. Singled, drove in an RBI, came around to score. Flied out as he takes ball one. And then was hit by a pitch or walked, depending. You know, it was ball four, but it hit him, so we're going hit by pitch. And came around to score. Three runs in the game. One and one is the count now as he takes one at the knees. Breaking ball on one and one is hit the other way. Shallow right field. Hustling in is, per, uh, excuse me, is Miklich, and he gets there in plenty of time. Uh, excuse me, it was actually coming out Angel Moreno that got there. So a pop out to second base rather than right field. That one spiked. Ball one. Jay Kelly has done it all today, whether at the plate or in the field. Turned a couple of double plays, been aboard every time he's come up. As that one was close, I think, unless it skipped the plate, but I think it was close and just dropped by the catcher. 
Corona, but I could be wrong. He could have bounced. Tough to tell for sure. 2-0 pitch. That one runs in on the hands, and he's able to foul it off. 2-1. and one. Out of the windup, here's the 2-1 pitch. Breaking ball, hit hard the other way to second. Up with it is Moreno, throws on to first, and that's two outs, and both of them involve Moreno. Looks like we have Dylan Bowers warming up for the Trinity side. Down that first baseline, and in fact, to the right of the first baseline. See if he comes in to try to shut the door in this one. Jude Pacheco has struck out, struck out, sacrifice bunted, and sacrifice flied. One RBI on the game. He's 0 for 2 as he swings through strike one. If he gets past Pacheco, it would be Dom Vasquez with another chance. He's already been aboard three times. 0-1 is the count to Pacheco, who steps back in from that left side. Over the top delivery is in there, letter high, 0-2. Not messing around is Ceballos. He has gone after hitters ever since coming in. And he's looking to put up a second straight zero here. 0-2 pitch. That one's hit hard on the line, right field, and that'll get down in the gap between right and center. Hustling for it is Miss Miklich, and he'll get the throw in, but not before Pacheco can coast into second base with a double. And yet another hit for the Trinity Trojans. Now batting, number 15, Dom Vasquez. Dom Vasquez has been a tough out. He did pop out once to shortstop, but other than that, it's been a walk, a single, and a hit by pitch. Fouls that one straight back. A lot of inside pitches here from Ceballos. Looks like he's trying to bust batters inside, but it's mostly worked out. Helps that he's thrown strikes, getting ahead. The 0 1. Breaking ball. Swung over the top of it. That rolled off the table. And that's something that Vasquez knows a little bit about as he's been throwing nice curveballs all night. 0 and 2. Foul tip just able to stay alive. Real impressive back control there. Didn't think he had a chance at it at first because he had to reach out with it almost one-handed. Really shows you what these athletes can do. 0-2 count, runner at second, nobody in. That breaking ball just a little bit too far inside. Try to open the front door on him. Count moves to one and two. And even those wastes are around the plate right now for Ceballos. As he just misses maybe a little high, maybe a little out, two and two. Possibly a combination of both. That was the fastball. It's not straight just because it's a fastball, though. You see a lot of movement on that thing. Count even now, 2-2 two -two pitch. Breaking ball. Sits back on it, pops it high in the air behind second base. Moreno is not able to make the play. That'll fall in, and that'll bring a run across the score. Pacheco was hustling with two outs, and Vasquez has brought in another run for his cause. Putting that one in as an E4. Brings in Jason Baker. He has gotten his fair share of looks in this one, a single and two walks, as well as a strikeout. Runner at first base. And we actually have a pinch hitter coming up. It appears for Baker. Can't quite make it out yet. May still be in the dugout.
You'll know when we do. Here he comes. It's Andres Ortiz coming off the bench, grabbing a bat, and looking to keep this inning alive for his side. Ortiz having a little chat with his coach. And you love to see a coach getting guys in with a large margin like this. Everybody gets a chance to get better when they get at bats against good competition. Oh boy, that'll wake you up. Come in cold off the bench and he doesn't get the snap on the breaking ball right by the helmet. One oh, that's in there at the knees for a strike one and one. It's kind of like, uh, I had a hockey player once tell me that nothing quite wakes you up in a hockey game like getting hit in open ice. Hearing a buzzing fastball around the dome, or breaking ball actually in that case. Not much different. <laughs> Two and one. Hitters count here for the pinch hitter, Ortiz, and another one up around the head there. Do wonder, as obviously unintentional as that was, if this now sets up the outside corner for Ceballos. Here it is. Grounded hard to third base, fielded on three hops, bobbled a little bit, but a strong throw, no. Not able to pick it. That's gonna bring home at least one run as he's being waved to score. We'll see if there's a play at the plate. Don't think there will be as the throws up the line. Standing on third base is Andreas Ortiz after putting the ball in play. And that's been the name of the game for the Trinity side so far. A throwing error. And Dom Vasquez comes in to score as well. That's actually his first time scoring in the game. Chris Casillas takes strike one. And excuse me, te technically, while Dom Vasquez was the one that got a board, it was Blake Armstrong, the courtesy runner, who scored. And now another run will score as Ortiz will run home, much to the delight of his dugout, being very supportive of him. You'd love to see it. The count at one and one with two down, nobody aboard anymore. Ceballos will look to work out of this. Here it is, in the dirt. Two one pitch out of the windup. That missed. Maybe just a little high inside, unsure. But Andrew Shimonkevich has been consistent as that one is flied shallowly to right. That's gonna get down for a hit. He's taking a turn, but will throw on the brakes. Casillas has his second knock of the game with a single. Braden Davis now, couple of, a uh, couple of errors he's reached on, singled, and he's grounded out six to three. And despite being able to get two outs, this inning has started to be a struggle and looks like we got another pinch hitter here from Will Averett's squad. It's Isaiah Pacheco getting ready to dig in from the uh, right side. Now batting, number three, Isaiah Pacheco. We saw earlier in this inning a double from Jude Pacheco. Now Isaiah will go around. 
Strike one. Maybe a strike anyway, knee high. I think it ended up lower than that, though. So probably a swing and strike called at home plate. Oh, one pitch. That finds the outside corner. Oh, and two, and Ceballos out in front here. Pacheco will look to stay alive. Lays off one just above the letters, one and two. A lot of dugout chatter from the Trinity side. One, two. That just missed, maybe a little low. Maybe a little outside, but I would lean low, two and two. Break even pitch. That's in there, strike three. He's down looking. As eventually, after three come across, Ceballos is able to get out of the inning. The bottom of the seventh, what will the task be for the Buffaloes? It's going to be a 12-run deficit to overcome. We'll see if they can do it with the three outs they're guaranteed left after a quick break. You're watching Buffaloes Baseball on Vipe Live. Welcome back for the bottom of the seventh inning. Dan Byford with you on Vipe Live as this 15 to three game is in potentially its final stages here. Yaziel Ceballos will get us started in the bottom of the seventh. Excuse me, yes, it is Yaziel Ceballos. Um, gonna look out on deck at all times as Dylan Bowers has entered the game on the mound. Just swapping spots with Dom Vasquez. Vasquez pitched six strong innings, three runs all earned. Two of them came on one swing. So really not much other than that. Very well pitched game. And if this 12 run lead holds up, he would be the victor. First pitch is in the dirt to Ceballos. But the 1-0, and now it's 2-0. Keep an eye out for any substitutions here trying to spark some last minute offense on the Haltom side but I imagine coach will just stick with his lineup that misses outside 3-0 and got to expect a strike here obviously probably not swinging at the eighth spot in the lineup but definitely don't want to be walking people with a 12 run lead especially not the bottom of the order 3-0 yep that's in there pretty good pitch too not just to get me over three and one Now the 3-1. And that's a little outside, I think, maybe a little high. Either way, ball four. Down to first base with his second walk is Ceballos, brings in Angel Moreno. Number four, Angel Moreno. Moreno started this game at third base, has since moved over to second. He takes one dotted at the knees, strike one. Let's 
Ceballos appears to be running for himself. That slider nearly caught the front door, but just didn't quite get there, one and one. Out of the stretch, the one one. Ooh, that hit him in the helmet. Quickly down to first base. He's Moreno, so hopefully he's doing all right. And indeed, not much hesitation on his way down there, so I think he is. Damien, uh, excuse me, Damien Bravo in. He had a two-run home run, a walk, and a line out to this point. One for two. Lays off a nasty pitch on the outside corner. Slider running away from him. Own oh one. Two runners aboard. The 0 1. That's hit hard on line. Center field. He was shaded the left field side. Dive, and that's going to get away. Roll all the way to the wall. Think that'll score two runs. We'll see about three as he's flying past the second base bag. Now he's going past third. Just got to make sure not to cut off his own man. Does he have another home run? He does, but inside the park this time. How about that? Two run out of the park home run, three run inside the park home run, and wow, Bravo can fly. So Rodrigo Bravo in now with the bases empty. No outs recorded yet by Bowers, but he still has plenty of runs to work with. That's in the dirt, laid off, ball one. And coach going to have a talk here real quick, as is the catcher, Jude Pacheco. And that was over quickly. To this point, Bravo has tripled, grounded out, and popped out. As he hits that one hard to center field, again, he was shaded toward left, but this time getting over there is Ryzen Hoover for the first out. And that was well struck, but ultimately not able to find a spot in that grass. Brings in Cameron Leslie. The left fielder tonight for Haltom has grounded to first unassisted, grounded to shortstop, and walked. The walk was his last time. Hitting from the left-hand side, the pitch. Knee high or strike. Now the 0-1. Just able to hold back. One and one. One one pitch. Up and out. Makes it two and one now. Behind Leslie, it's Mario Gomez, who has struck a couple of balls pretty solidly and has a knock tonight. 2-1. That's chopped over the mound. A dive by second baseman Cruz. He throws it away, though, and I don't really know if he would have gotten them anyway. It was a heck of a play just to keep it in the infield. I'm, I'm going to call that an infield single personally. I don't see an E on the scoreboard at this point. I think he had the throw beat just hustling down the line anyway. It helps when you come from that lefty batter's box. You get a little bit of a head start. Mario Gomez now looks at ball one outside. Sixth man to come to home plate for his side in this half inning. The bottom of the seventh, 15 to six our score. As that one is chopped between third and short, over there is Kelly, throws on to second for one. Cruz will stick it in his back pocket. And there are two gone 
a monumental task now to try to score nine with only one out to work with. Crazier things have happened. So a 6-4 fielder's choice brings in Ramon Corona. He's singled twice and grounded out to third base. The pitch from the set. Breaking ball right there. Nice pitch. 0-1. Oh Now the 0-1 pitch. Here it is. High leg kick and a fastball that he was not on top of a little bit there. Just a little high. 1-1. One one. It was uh, about the right side of the plate, just a little too high. That breaking ball inside is turned on. Looked like it might drop. It will in front of Risenhoover despite some fast running from him. It's another single. That moves Leslie up to second base. Gomez standing at first. And Brian Nevret will bat once more. Grounded out, singled, and grounded into two. Infield back all the way around. Any bag, as that one is swung through on the inside part of the plate. Any bag, by which I mean first, second, or third, would end the game here. Pickoff move back behind him, but runner back safely. Oh, 1 count with two gone, two runners on, three runners in. That's a nice pitch, low inside corner. Tough to make a better front door breaking pitch than that. And quickly, down to their final strike are the Buffaloes. Pops one high in the air. Right center field hustling over is Perez. He puts it away to end. Oh, excuse me? What is going on? I'm sorry. Did he hit the catcher's mitt and they're calling catcher interference or something? I, I'm a little confused. I'm not quite sure what's going on here. Ah, uh, there was a Bach right before. Apologies on the delay there and the confusion. Count at one and two now after the Bach. The Runners advance to second and third. A <laughs> little bit of unfortunate timing there. But now to the windup, here's Bowers' pitch. Foul tipped, not gloved, or mitted. And interesting to see what Neverett will do with his second life here after the late buck call, after which he actually made contact and flied out. Oh, he swung on and missed, strike three. Slider in the dirt, and ultimately, Bowers gets the final out of the game in a way he probably likes a little more with a strikeout. Little bit of glamor there to end the game. So, 15 to six, that's our final in this one, and not really in the business of choosing players of the game in general, but I think this guy deserves a shout out here tonight. Dom Vasquez not only was on base three times in the game, but he's pitched six solid innings, only allowed three runs. Well could have won the game by himself on the mound if uh, he wasn't relieved in the seventh inning. But um, ultimately he was for Bowers and he just did it at both ends and moved into third base. Bowers moved onto the mound. Just had a real solid game. Only had the one mistake, the two run home run over the wall in left field, but he bounced back well from that. Few balls after that, but 
coach came to the mound, had a conversation with him, and ultimately they worked it out and they got a real solid outing from him. On the other side, do want to point out for Halton, quite a day for, from Damian Bravo. At the plate, he had a couple of home runs to go with a walk and a line out. And also at the, on the mound, he had six strikeouts, if my count is correct, five strikeouts through the first two innings. However, he just uh, wasn't able to get defense behind him in the early part of the game. Ultimately, everybody settled in back there, but it was a little too little, too late. So just want to thank you so much for tuning in on Vipe Live this evening, watching some Buffaloes baseball with me, Dan Byford. I had a blast. I hope you enjoyed the call as well. Have a great night. Enjoy your weekend. And we'll see you again real soon.